Hello, hello. I have a very special guest with me today. Oh, this is a big thing for me. Um, someone who has changed my life in the most profound way. Someone who is going to open your eyes to the different ways that you can make money from your creativity. Someone who works with artists and business owners so that they can make hundreds of thousands of pounds a year and even multi-millions of pounds a year. Yes, you heard me right. <laughs> A massive welcome, Stu McLaren. Ah, uh, buddy, I wish I was there. I, I want to give you like a a, a big hug. Uh, and you're sporting the Better Together t-shirt. I love it. I know. I just have to say, first of all, those who are tuning in from Facebook Live. Oh, we can see your comments now. They're coming in. Fantastic. Don't worry. All I could see was YouTube comments. And I know lots of you. Yeah, here we go. They're all coming in now. Brilliant. Good to see you all tuning in. And oh, my gosh, my heart is pounding. Uh, my heart is pounding, and I'll tell you why in a minute, but Stu McLaren has been a massive influence on me. Those who know me, I talk about him all the time. You've heard of, you've heard his name, <laughs> and now he's here on the screen with me, and it's so amazing. So Stu has a free workshop that starts tomorrow. How exciting is that, Stu? Um, and this is a workshop that I took back in 2016 that absolutely changed my life. 100%. The link is above. Go and sign up now. It will, you know, open your eyes to so many ways of working as an artist. Um, you might have art that you love making and maybe you're struggling to make extra cash. Um, this is a great opportunity to learn from Stu in how to do that. You might just want extra income every now and again, or you might want to impact people in a way that you've never even considered before. I know there's so many people in our community that make art, but actually have a little inkling of wanting to do kind of little workshops, teach it back, but you don't feel qualified, all of that stuff. That's what we're gonna be talking about today and Stu will blow your mind. So massive welcome. I want to just talk first of all, a little bit about my story. And this is where my heart is pounding. I'm not going to go into too much detail, just five minutes. So if you're watching the replay, you can skip past this pit if you don't want to hear it. But I'm just going to spend five minutes because I can't bring Stu in and not talk about the impact that he's had um, on my life. So, okay. I come from a really deprived um, council estate in the UK. So it was a pretty, pretty rough area that I lived in. Um, and my parents were doing okay. You know, we could put food on the table. We could afford shoes and things like that. But the people around our area were bad. And um, I was actually brought up to believe that if you want something nice in life, you steal it. And it's so sad now for me to look back and think that that's what I believed and lots of people around me believe. Like, it's insane. Like, I, I look back now and I think, how could we all have believed that? But we did. People like us didn't get nice things. If you want them, you steal them. And, and it's horrific. And so, um, sadly, when I was uh, kind of at the age of 13, 12, 13, I got into a really, really bad relationship. Um. And I won't go into detail, but it was it was pretty bad and it was for three years and it really, really um, impacted my whole life. And I went into adulthood broken. I didn't really go to school much. I didn't have an education. I failed on my exams. Um, and I remember feeling inferior to every single living person on the planet. Like there wasn't another person that I didn't feel inferior around. Um, and so I was struggling at that point with anxiety, stress, depression. I was being diagnosed with all sorts of different mental health problems. I was trying to study and catch up on all the things that I'd missed as a child, but I was always struggling. I was... Um, you know, I'd got the, my finger on the, the destruct and ruin my life button constantly. I was sabotaging everything. I was angry. I was drinking and I was taking drugs to heal everything. Um, and it was bad. I, could, I didn't, 
I wasn't able to hold a job down. I'd stay in a job maximum 12 months and then I'd, you know, have an argument with someone or I was, you know, it was just horrific. And so um, then I hit my mid 20s and I was diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia, which ended up answering a lot of, you know, questions for me around why I felt like I was just so um, broken um, in other ways other than the past. But, you know, I could tell my brain just wouldn't function uh, in ways that I wanted it to. And that was always a struggle. Um, mm -hmm. And then I found art. Oh, art saved me. You know, at that point, I found art and I was doing art courses and I was drawing. And this is why I am such a massive advocate for the arts because it literally came into my life at that point. It gave me a purpose. It gave me something that I could start to learn and create a skill. I finally had something to channel all this pain and all this kind of hurt and process all of that, but also have something at the end of it, which I could hang up and go to that looks quite good. You know, so art was the thing that it, it, it helped me learn. And I finally went back to art school. I say finally, I went to art school, but back to school as a mature student and I got my degree and I, I never, ever thought I would get a qualification. You know, I had such fixed beliefs. And so art, I spent every day for six years making art. And that was my therapy. I look back now and I realize that was my therapy. Six years mm -hmm. every day in a studio, learning, getting a degree, but it was my therapy. And so what happened after that, and I felt, you know, I was in a safe space. I was loving it. I graduated and I couldn't get a job. <laughs> I was completely unemployable. So I had, you know, had this amazing time and learned a lot about myself and about my skill and, and, and healed in many ways. But boom, I was graduated and I, I couldn't get a job unemployable and I just felt like an utter failure again and not only that I'd racked up loads of debt whilst I was being a student and so then I felt myself back in the real world of well you're pathetic and people actually even said to me you know I bet you really regret doing that now don't you you know you've completely wasted six years of your life and I remember thinking gosh yeah I probably have and I remember going for jobs um, and they'd look at my CV, what have you been doing? Well, I've just been in an art studio for the last six years. And they're like, no, sorry, you're not even coming for an interview. And so, again, my life just seemed to implode. And I just felt myself getting a, a deep, deep, dark place again, even though I had art. It, it, art. The art school kept me going. But then being back in that real world of having to make a living and how how to apply that to real life was a struggle. And so... Fast forward a little bit, um, I ended up setting up a business, which was United Art Space, but it was a physical studio space because I was craving being around people and I couldn't get a job. So I thought I'll set up a space. It was a disaster. I mean, I loved it, but end up in more debt. The business was a failure. So I came out of that thinking, I am doomed. Literally, I am doomed. I'm a walking disaster. I can't even get a job or set a business you know I was so so in my own head at this point and then that brings me up to 2016 and this is where it gets really emotional because then I started to set up a you know I really just wanted to be around people and that's when I set up the virtual art studio I was just really craving being around people at this point I'd had I'd had a baby and recently got married so life was picking up on that front um, and I wanted to be around people. So I set up the virtual art studio. Some of you who remembers the virtual art studio here, that's where it all began. And then Stu came into my life that same year with his free training, which the link is above. <laughs> Go and click the link. And I took his free training. Oh my gosh. And I'll never forget. I can even recall the images that I looked at in your training. I can remember sitting at my computer looking at the images and, and and certain flash points it was just such a monumental moment in my life because it taught me so much about um 
the money blocks that I had, massive blocks, well, blocks in all kinds of areas of my life. It taught me that, wow, I need to change this. You know, it, it taught me so much about the way that I could potentially make an impact because at that point, I didn't really believe it. I had so many limiting beliefs around, I can't teach anyone, I can't run a business, I'm broken, you know, I've got this repeating pattern, I'm no good at anything. And so it taught me that, oh, hold on a minute, maybe this is possible because she was really great at inspiring you and opening your eyes. And so 2017, I took the full course um, that Stu teaches and it's absolutely incredible. And I've been stalking him ever since. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, what it's brought me today is just insane. And, and like we, I was just reflecting back um, of what we've achieved since I took Stu's course. And it's, we've impacted over 80,000 people around the world in some way through our training, through our podcast, through all the things that we that we do and we've sold courses and a membership to more than 5000 people we've connected all of you from around the world we've seen you meeting up in australia and canada and usa and i was um talking to my niece not long back she lives in new zealand and she said my friend um, was talking about an art an arts organization and it happened to be yours and this was on the playground in new zealand and i was like oh my gosh um and so not only that, but it's it's honestly helped me understand how to be a better person. You know, when I look back at how uh, angry I was with people and it's taught me how to be kind and how to be generous and how to be myself and find the goodness in myself to give back to other people. And Stu, I can't thank you enough for that gift because, you know, we haven't even spoken about the money part, but that for me is everything when you know how I felt as a younger person to be so fulfilled in the work that I do today is everything mm. Go. <laughs> wow buddy I had no idea about some of that backstory um my favorite moment with you was you you had launched your membership and you were you'd gotten off to a good start uh, but then you had hit uh, a plateau and you were beginning to get a little bit frustrated because you wanted it to grow. And I remember you had the courage to to change things up a little bit in terms of your messaging. And I remember we had talked about it and, and you uh, had the courage to go through and change some of the messaging. And one of my favorite moments ever as an entrepreneur was receiving a video from you <laughs> where you were talking about the breakthrough because you that particular launch i believe had more than tripled the results from what you had done before and to me that was a defining moment for you because it was like this moment where i could see that belief that you're talking about go to a whole nother level and that mm. confidence go to another level and um mm. it's just been an absolute joy to see you just really blossom. And I still think you're just getting started. Like, I, I think you're, you know, just starting now to realize, you know, what you're capable of, it's, you know, and, and starting to build momentum. Uh, but it's incredibly exciting and rewarding to see the journey that you have been on. And now even knowing some of the backstory, it's, it's amazing, Michelle. And I just look at the people that you're impacting. And um, I'm just so grateful that a membership has played a role in that and uh, in some capacity. Yeah, I remember that um, that day when I messaged you because not long before I'd been told by a doctor that I should just get a job in a supermarket stacking shelves because I was really um, struggling with my ADHD and dyslexia at that point. And it really stayed with me, that comment, because I thought that's what I was supposed to go off and do. And I, and I found Stu and I never, ever really believed that it was possible, but I saw something in Stu and what he was saying. And I just knew this guy knows what he's talking about. And I'm saying this to all of you now that he really does. And I knew that if if I want to do this and help other people and create this membership, I'm just going to follow Stu and do everything he says. And that's what I've done. And that's why I'm where I am. And it's impacted the, you know, the book I'm writing is 100% hands down because of Stu. And that comes out this year soon. <laughs> 
Um, and the hike, you know, every, a, lot of, a lot of people here will know about the hike. This was because of Stu, you know, you have totally, totally rocked my world. So, yes. And I look at all the lovely comments. You, you're all amazing. Thank you so much. Um, but this is why I wanted to bring Stu in to talk to you. And we want to, you know, this is where it gets juicy tomorrow. The free workshops is where the, the real, you know, amazing content is going to be. But we were going to talk today about the four different types of membership sites that you could create and we're going to kind of just have a bit of a conversation about how other artists that we both know are using this kind of model um because like i say i think there's lots of you sitting there that probably disregarded this or just think it's not possible for you so that's why i want to share some different ways of using this so do you want to jump in Stu, on those four the four main types of, of yeah memberships? for sure like so we'll talk about them and then i i think what we can do is uh, one of them is probably the most popular type. And when we think of artists, like we have so many artists in our community who are thriving with memberships. And I just wanna take a moment and talk about that for a second, Michelle, because I think that this is important for artists to realize. Like, you know that our community is full of incredible artists that have amazing memberships. and. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that artists are wired a little bit differently than most human beings. And they're mm -hmm. wired differently in a way that actually makes a membership a perfect match. So first is that a lot of memberships for artists are teaching people something. We'll unpack that in a second. And just through the nature of art, like you don't go from not knowing how to paint to becoming the next Picasso overnight. Like that's a journey and it takes time and that's what makes it perfect for a membership. So I think that that one component is, you know, really important. But I think the other component is that artists, they think more with their heart than they do with their head. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a strength when it comes to a membership business. Because when people are on a journey and they're learning something or they're going deeper in their skill set or they're there for community, that heart shows up because we care about the people that we're serving. And we, we actually care about their journey. We care about their progress. Like I know you, I want to share with your audience, like Michelle, this is for everybody in the audience. Michelle, pretend that I'm not talking to you right now, but for everybody watching, when, when Michelle talks about you, she can't stop gushing about her passion for your progress. She can't stop gushing about your art. She can't stop gushing about like helping you turn your art into a business. And, and she's so passionate about you because she cares. And, and I find that in general, most artists lead with their heart versus their head. And that's why it's a strength in memberships because they actually care about members. Whereas like other dudes who are just in it to make a buck, they see members come in and go right out because the members can feel it. The members can sense that this person is just in it for themselves. They don't, they don't care about my progress. They don't care about my results. They're just in it to make a buck. And that's why they see high turnover in a membership. So I just think artists are naturally wired. Um, to, and that's why they're, it's a perfect match for a membership. So let's talk about four quick uh, membership models. Number one is a product-based membership. So we have a bunch of people in our community that have this. Uh, on the art side, I would think like Casey Hope falls into this bucket. So she teaches people uh, calligraphy, but she also sends out like these templates and uh, stencils uh, every quarter as part of her membership. So it is both a digital membership and a physical product. Like people are being sent that. Or uh, I think of some others, uh, other um, artists in our community who send like art supplies uh, each and every month. So that's a physical product that's being sent. So there are many types of physical products. You know, they've been popularized with subscription boxes. Uh, Sarah Williams in our community is probably the, the poster child of that. You know, she had a retail shop and just noticed that her best customers that were coming back were buying the same items. And she had this light bulb moment. Well, wait a minute. What if I turn that into a subscription box? And then it took 
her market from her local market in her little Texas town to like nationwide. And she now has 3000 plus members in that membership. So that's a physical product membership. I'm just going to say um, how many how many people would want a physical box to come through their door every month with art supplies in? I know that's what I would like. <laughs> right? Yeah. Or art projects. Like we have others, um, different type of art, like uh, knitting. Mm. Um, you know, Shelly Brander, she's got a, a knitting membership uh, and would send out like wool and patterns to her uh, members. Um, there's all kinds of, you know, physical product. Members. My wife belongs to a, an earring membership, an earring of the month membership. It's called Lobe Love, <laughs> um, but same sort of thing. She gets, you know, earrings every quarter. Th that's a physical product mm -hmm. membership. Second yeah. type would be a service-based membership. So I don't know that there would necessarily be art-based services unless maybe you were teaching art classes at like a, a, a physical uh, studio. And in that sense, instead of like people paying one-off classes, what you would do is you'd offer a membership. So they pay every single month and then they would get a certain number of classes. Um, so there are all kinds of, you know, service-based memberships. Mary Claire Fredette in our community is probably the best example. She has a massage studio. And before her income was always up and down each month, depending on whether clients came in and got a massage or not. Mm -hmm. And so she wanted to even that out. She launches a membership and right away, now she has clients paying every single month. And now they have the stability and predictability, or she does, of that income coming in. And, you know, this was a few months ago, I was catching up with her. And I just asked, like, how things are going. And she said, oh, I, I actually haven't launched the membership since. And in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, no, like, what's going on? And she's like, oh, no, 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 I haven't needed to. She said, 80% of the people that signed up with me three years ago are still part of the membership today, which is mind boggling, right? So that's a service-based membership. And there are many examples, like there's a barber shop here in Toronto. They have a service-based membership. You pay a certain uh, monthly fee, you get a certain number of cuts. Or there's a car wash across from our uh, office. You can go through the car wash one time for 10 bucks, or you can go through an unlimited number of times for 12 bucks a month. You know, it changes the whole perspective. Because that car wash, by the way, has 4,500 monthly paying customers. Can you imagine? Like every other car wash in the city is hoping that their clients come back and buy from them again. That car wash knows with certainty that at the start of the month, 4,500 people are going to pay them. That's the difference. So we got physical product, service-based memberships. And then the third category is the most popular. And that is a knowledge-based membership. So Michelle, your membership would fall into this category, right? Mm -hmm. And there are really like three subsets of a knowledge-based membership. So subset number one is where we are solving an ongoing problem. So some good examples of that would be like, let's say you have a puppy that's wildly out of control and you want to train that puppy. Well, it's not going to go from a puppy that's wildly out of control to the perfect puppy like that. It is going to take time. That's an ongoing problem. That would make for a great knowledge-based membership. Or let's say you have a membership teaching people about weight loss and you want to help people go from uh, being overweight to their uh, ideal weight. Well, again, that's not going to happen overnight. That's an ongoing problem. Or let's say that you've got, um, you're helping people with relationships, go from a broken relationship to an amazing relationship. Well, again, that's not going to happen overnight. So that makes for a great, uh, knowledge-based membership that's solving an ongoing problem. Now, the subset number two of a knowledge-based membership is where you're teaching people a skill. So I'd say this is probably where the vast majority of art-based memberships fall under, where we're teaching people how to go from not knowing how to paint to becoming a great artist or to not knowing how to draw realistic animals with colored pencils, like what Bonnie Snowden uh, teaches, to mm -hmm. being able to create these amazing drawings, right? Or yeah. um, teaching people like calligraphy, like we were talking about with Casey Hope, or, or teaching people watercoloring, like Alex Kincaid. She was a former lawyer, and during the pandemic, she's just burnt out. So she starts painting with watercolors as a way to kind of de-stress. And she's like, this is amazing. And so then she starts teaching some classes, 
And then she's like, this is amazing even more. And she's like, I just want to help more people. So she starts a membership and now got hundreds and hundreds of members uh, teaching people watercolor. Like it can happen in all kinds of different ways where we're teaching people a skill. And so there are all kinds of subsets. we got tons of examples in our community of people with all kinds of different art uh, that they are teaching people uh, how to deepen their skills and, and uh, become better and better. And then the third subset of that knowledge-based membership is where we are providing convenience for people. So an example of that would be like uh, Julie Soul. As, so she is a uh, homeschooling mom. And uh, during the pandemic, she just started sharing some of the art lessons that she was doing with her kids. She's passionate about art. And her whole mindset was like, I want my kids to love art. So she would pour all this energy into creating like these amazing art lessons. And then during the pandemic, when all these parents are at home, like, oh my gosh, like, what do I do with my kids? Um, one of her neighbors said, you should share like the art lessons that you're doing. So she starts sharing it on a free Facebook group. And then all of a sudden she's got these parents saying, hey, you know, do you have any more lessons? Like, can you, do you have lessons that you could sell? And so she bundled a bunch of them together and she initially sold them for 10 bucks and like a whole bunch of people bought them. And she's like, oh my gosh. And then people were saying, well, wait, what am I going to do next month? Like, do you have any more lessons next month? And she's like, well, I guess I could create them. And so she launches a membership. She's got thousands of members where she's providing the convenience of ready, prepared art lessons. And so in that sense, what she's doing is she's creating the convenience so that the stay-at-home parents don't have to think about what to do. They can just follow her lesson plan accordingly. So those are the three subsets of a knowledge-based membership. One that solves an ongoing problem, one that teaches a skill, or one that creates convenience. And then the last and final model, number four, is a community-based membership. This is where you just bring people who have a shared interest together. You know, when I was growing up, Michelle, I grew up in a tiny little town out in the middle of nowhere. Like I grew up with corn on one side, cows on the other. And so growing up, if you had like a weird passion or interest, there was a high probability that you were the only person that had that passion or interest. And so you didn't talk about it because you didn't want to get made fun of and all that kind of stuff. But now the internet, this is what's amazing about the internet. The internet brings all of us weirdos together. So like if you've got like a passion or an interest, like just creating a safe place for people who have the same passion or interest is tremendously valuable. And that's why people will join a membership. So product-based, yeah. service-based, knowledge-based, and community-based memberships. Those are the four kinds. Any other weirdos here? Let us know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> definitely a weirdo do you know um i'm just now sitting here thinking about all the the thoughts some people might be feeling excited and some people are going to be thinking oh my gosh this sounds like hard work or i don't want thousands of members or you know so because this is what i was thinking when i sat here so i want you to just keep an open mind and go through these workshops tomorrow with an open mind about yourself and about what is possible for you because if you try and put barriers in the way immediately you know, you just close yourself to any kind of way of potentially adding another another stream to, well, a string to your bow and a stream to your, your money and your income. And so one of the things I think comes up a lot for artists is I like making the art and I don't want anything else to take me away from that. So next week, join me live because I'm talking to Bonnie Snowden, who is a great example of somebody who has set up a membership. And she literally spends all day, the majority of all day, just drawing. Because she's been really, um, she's a smart woman, you know, she's set it up so that she's got a team around her doing the majority of the stuff so that she can sit there just drawing all day because that's what she wanted it for <laughs> um and so she basically turned to art as a self-taught artist you know after years of not making and then ended up and some of you here will know Bonnie yeah I love Bonnie I know we all love Bonnie she's coming in next week um and has set up this amazing membership by this is what I say to artists too if you can try and bring all of your creativity into one and so you're making and whatever your 
reach out to other people um, in in relation to like a membership if you want to set one up make it all the same and I say this because I see artists go well I like making earrings I could set up a membership painting and it's like do all the same because whilst you're making whatever you love you can be teaching it at the same time mm -hmm. and then it doesn't become a job and a lot of people um here I know say I've got loads of artists following me and so if you've got loads of artists following you you know they want to learn from you and so you might be sat on a way that you can you know, kind of monetize that, but also spread the skill and share the skill. Mm. Um, another another uh, person I wanted to share really quickly as well on this, because I, I, my friend Sharon, and everyone's probably going to type bingo now, because I say the same things like you, Stu, over and over again, and so people play bingo when I say it. So <laughs> 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 and my friend Sharon is one of them. Um, but my friend Sharon, she's a full-time artist, a sculptor. And she used to teach, but for the last few years, she's just been wholly dedicated on the making and selling. And she's a phenomenal artist and she makes 100% of her income from her art, which is which is great. Um, and then this year, she said, kind of like, I really do miss that aspect of just giving back and teaching. And, um, and what I love about Sharon is she just does things in the most simplest way possible. And so she kind of did a pop-up membership, <laughs> which I absolutely love. So she just decided to just kind of like do a pop-up and it was a month long and it was community-based, you know, it's heavily community-based. You know, Sharon made it clear, I'm not going to be in there. There was a, a video drop every week um, and it was Clay Club and it was to bring people who love making clay together. Who was in Clay Club? Let me know. <laughs> um and 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 this is a great example sometimes we get in our own heads because yes it, it's amazing if you do it recurring and and Stu's going to talk about that throughout the workshops because you've got that recurring revenue coming in and that is fantastic you know as a business that for us to have that money coming in every month is just we are so grateful um but Sharon you know I remember Sharon saying I don't really want that I kind of just want to pop, do a pop-up every now and again and do it on my own terms. And so she just ran it and she, I think she made just over 15 grand, you know, for a pop-up, a pop-up membership. And that's paid for her kiln upgrade and electrics. And, and so I just, you know, share that story because, you know, you could do it in the same way if you were really, really terrified about committing to a long-term uh, membership but like I say if you're integrating this with what you do and you're very intentional about who you want in your community then it doesn't feel like work like I never feel like it's work for me with all of you inside my membership it's absolutely amazing um are there any other ways Stu I'm just trying to think too because we've who was it that did the door hangers so there was a is it yeah um, Tamara Tamara Bennett yeah okay, she yeah. has a membership creating decorative door hangers. And I remember when she first told me, I'm like, like door hangers, like when you're, you know, in the hotel room and you don't want to be disturbed. And she's like, oh no, Stu. She's like, she's from the South in the US. And she's like, here in the South, we, we put like these big decorations on our doors and they're like these, you know, door decorations. And I was like, ah, oh. you know, when she launched, she had over 400 members in that membership teaching people how to make decorative door hangers. Like who would have thought? And I just think, you know, at the end of the day, you know, as artists, there is, there is something incredible that people are drawn to you and your art. Like I was talking to this woman, her, um, her uh, Instagram is open. Cause I was chatting with her right before I jumped on. I'm going to, I'm going to show you. She's, she's got a, um, her Instagram handle is wall, like W-A-L-L, -L, underscore where, W-E-A-R. So people can go see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, but she creates these beautiful wall murals, and um, they're phenomenal. And she uh, was on a, a call that I had earlier this week, and she's from, uh, actually not far from me here, and she's just like, I my, my wheels are just like turning. She's like, I can't stop thinking about like a potential membership. And then she sent me a message this morning. And she said, I get questions like this all the time. Like this is the, the message. She said, like literally took a screenshot and 
Uh, the first two questions were, how do you get started with painting murals? I create art, but would love to transfer the skill to painting murals, but I'm unsure of how to go about taking that leap from paper to walls. And then the next question, how do you decide on a design? I tend to get stuck in inspiration and overwhelm. So like people are asking her questions like, how do you do what you do? And if anybody has ever received questions from anybody asking, like, how are you doing this? There's a good chance that you've probably just dismissed it. Like, oh, oh, you just do this. It's simple. It's easy. Blah, blah, blah. And like, it's easy for you because that's, that's what you naturally do, right? But we seldom take a step back and think like, wait a minute. Like that is a sign, that is an opportunity to be able to help others be able to do something similar. And so I said to this woman, I said like, her name is Marilena. I said, Marilena, like this is a massive opportunity. Like she's got this following on Instagram, people follow her for her wall murals, but they're asking questions. It would be so easy for her then to transfer the momentum of those questions into a membership because people want to learn. So I share this because I want to encourage everybody, do not dismiss the questions that people are asking, thinking that, oh, everybody knows this. They don't. And, you know, Alex Kincaid, who we talked about earlier, who has the watercolor membership, you know, she said something um, this week that I thought was really profound in the sense that she said, look, she said, so often we think that we have to be the ultimate expert. Like we have to, you know, have all these credentials, whatever. She said, I just had an interest in watercoloring. It just helped me de-stress. And she said, so I just started sharing it with others. And she said, I'm not the best watercolor artist. I am self-taught. I've got so much uh, that I need to learn. But she said, but I'm one step ahead of a lot of people. And, and that's all I need to be. I, you know, I just need to be one step ahead because if somebody's learning that skill for the first time, like, you know, so much more than somebody who is brand spanking new. And that's all you need to operate from in most cases. And in even some cases, Michelle, you don't even need to be the expert. You can just be that person who's passionate and, and serve as almost like an advocate. Like I think of, um, it's not in an art market, but it's, it'll serve the purpose. Uh, John Gallagher, he was just passionate about like natural herbs and natural herb remedies. He wasn't an expert on that. He was just passionate about it. So he started a membership called Herb Mentor. And then he would survey his members and he'd ask questions about like, what are they looking for? He'd gather all of that. And then he'd go and he'd find like the experts and he'd bring them in. And he was just curating that experience. So he wasn't even the expert. He's now got more than 5,000 plus members in that membership. And so I just think too often people underestimate their own knowledge, their own skills, and uh, dismiss questions that people are asking. Like, oh, the people, mo vast majority of people know that. No, they don't. That's why they're asking. And all you need to do is be one step ahead of those who are asking the questions to be able to serve them and help them and to be able to support them in their growth and their journey. And at the same time, be able to have a business that supports you doing the thing that you love. Like, okay, for everybody in the chat, in the chat, let's just take a moment and let's just gush on Michelle for a minute. Um, <laughs> I would love if in the chat, you could just leave a comment and just share one thing I know there's probably more, but just share one thing that you love about Michelle or one way that Michelle has helped you with your art, with the way your perspective on life. Because the reason I want to take a moment and just acknowledge Michelle in this way is because can you imagine a world where Michelle wasn't able to share her genius, wasn't able to share her passion, wasn't able to connect all of us online. Can you imagine if she had to go and get that job stocking shelves at a grocery store? 
Like our world would be worse. But because Michelle has built this amazing business, being able to help others with art, the thing that she's passionate about, it gives her now the freedom to be able to do more of what she loves. So as artists, like if you're passionate about art, like the thing that would allow you to be able to do more of that art and be able to pick the type of art that you want to do is by building a business around the art. I think of Heidi Easley, who she loved art, but art felt like a factory to her at one point because the way in which she was making money to be able to sustain a living was painting surfboards. And she was painting hundreds of surfboards a month just to be able to like make ends meet. But when she started her membership, what it did was it gave her the freedom to say no to the art projects that she didn't want to do and say yes to more of the art that she did want to do. And that's the magic of a membership is it enables us as artists to be able to say yes to more of the things and the projects that we love doing. And look at all of these beautiful comments. Michelle, look at the impact that you have had on so many people. And this is my point. Like, thank you everybody for leaving a comment and uh, anybody watching the replay, I want to encourage you to still do the same. I want to encourage you to leave a comment. I know Michelle is going to read them and mm -hmm. I know that that means the world to her, but the reason I wanted to do that exercise is just to put into perspective what an impact that Michelle has had on all of us. And wouldn't it have been a crying shame if she didn't have the business that gave her the ability to be able to share her art and to be able to impact all of us. Uh, that's why we do this. That's why this is so important and meaningful. And that's why I want to encourage so many others to come and do the same because your work matters and you have no idea the ripple effect that it can and will have, but you got to give it a chance. Mm, thank you. I don't know what to say. I don't buy. <laughs> 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 honestly thank you so much oh amazing I don't even know what you were saying then for the last minute because I was reading in the chat <laughs> was it's so, amazing so Michelle L those comments look at them all it is I know. I it know. is so beautiful I, I the way just that read... you have poured into people I know and and this is why I have to I have so much gratitude for Stu because honestly it's everything I've learned from Stu is how I put myself out in the world how I you know, how I create things. Someone someone said that you create things in a really simplified way. I learned all of this from Stu. And I remember when I first came across Stu, I, I didn't have a clue. I was, you know, I had no belief in myself. I was a failed, I felt like a failed artist, a failed studio um, person who couldn't even run a business, you know. So I came into the thinking, what on earth could I teach people? Like <laughs> how to be a failure? And I, I that's what I felt and and I really didn't feel like an expert in anything and so my idea originally and I love that Stu shares this that you don't have to be the expert because I did not feel like an expert in any way shape or form so my idea was I'll just bring people in and they can teach people and I'll just curate all of this you know I just want to just bring people together that's what I love doing and it was really interesting as I went through the full course that Stu teaches um, the TME full course when I started to go through that I didn't realize actually what I was going to get from that I thought I was going to learn like how to create a membership but it actually taught me wow I do know some stuff and it also taught me that if I get all these people in there's something I still want to say and that's when the seven keys was born I don't know if there's any Kevin seven key students here but the seven keys exists because of Stu's program like that was what I was going through. I didn't realize, it, you know, and I know you don't advocate this, that you're going to teach people how to teach a course and how to write a course, but that's what it gave me. It opened my eyes to what was inside of me. And um, and then I remember getting all my post-its out and, and creating this course. And so, and I share this too, because I know there's a lot of people in our community that probably don't feel qualified enough to share your skills 
or your experiences in art with other people. But like Stu said, sometimes people just want real people. They don't want you to have a degree or, or to have like to be a professor in art and know art history inside out. Or, you know, that was one of my other things. I, I've studied art history, but can I remember any of it? No. And I was so scared when I set up United Art Space thinking, what if someone asks me an art history question and I can't answer it? And I had all these crazy thoughts in my head. And um, it's really funny now. And I look back how like how kind of in my own way I was and and actually yeah people just want real people and like Stu says if you if you've just started making and you want to just get a group of people around you and you all even learn together even that can work <laughs> you know mm. I remember when I just wanted to be around other people and some people will pay for that you know we're living in a really overwhelming toxic world aren't we and if you create a little safe space and I, I say a little it doesn't have to be little it can be big but I say small because someone here said you know I'd be scared that it grew too big you're in control this was something else I learned from Stu you are in control of this it can be as small or as big as you want it to be and um you know you can you can create it in any way that you want to and and it could just be um like you drop you drop a, a a piece of um inspiration into a group each month and you will work on that together or you know there's just so many so many ways that's why if you tie it in with your own art making it just becomes an extension of who you are and what you're doing already and really thinking out of the box in terms of how that look I, I like that you mentioned the kind of physical space too mm. because I was just looking into this recently and art gyms are a thing. So, cause I was thinking the other day, if I was going to set up a studio space again, how would I make it work? Cause the first one was a financial disaster and it, you know, we were renting out space and you're, you've got a ceiling because you can only rent out so much space because the building right. fills up. And so I was thinking, wow, what if you like a gym works, doesn't it? So what if you created kind of art space where people can drop in and use the facilities and use it like a gym. And like you said, you could have classes that are running. Mm. And like in a gym, if you don't book on the class and it's full, that's fine. You book on next week, you get in. And so I Googled it and I think, you know, if any if any of you want to set one up in my area, please do, because I want to join. Because <laughs> I was thinking I wanted to do it, but I, it's not my thing. I, I just thought it's a great idea. But I started to look, there is one in Denver and I think this is going to be big for the art scene. I think there's going to be lots of more art gyms popping up all over the place, which are going to be membership subscription based art spaces. And I was looking, there was one in Amsterdam. Um, so the one in Denver is very like, um, there's, there's a print press and a ceramic studio and all these different things. And you can just call in and you can use it for a particular amount of hours each month. But on a smaller scale, you could do that. Um, I was looking at this place in Amsterdam. And so they've just got a little room and people just come in to be creative and people just kind of sit around and they subscribe and they can drop in and they can use it for so many hours a month and they can just sit and read or make some art draw and I was like wow this is so cool so that's amazing yeah and I and I just think this yeah this is definitely I, the I know there's, there's, a, there's a similar space uh near where we live uh not necessarily for art but for photography in the same sort of way like uh beautiful you know uh settings you know that are great for like client shoots and similar sort of thing like these photographers pay a monthly fee to be able to have access uh, to the studio of which they can like, you know, bring clients in, do photo shoots and all that kind of stuff. Um, but they've got to book it, you know, in a, in a similar way. I think it's brilliant. Mm, yeah. So I just think, and especially, I mean, in our area, it depends where you live, of course, there is so much space available and there is so much funding in giving creatives access to space too and so I share that now as um, you know it could be planting a seed in someone's mind that team up with some some other artists in your area and maybe use Stu's training to keep an open mind about that if especially if there isn't a space already and you're feeling frustrated that's where I set mine up years ago and you'll be surprised how much funding there is to get those things off the ground too so yeah oh so super good. fun lots of possibilities <laughs> 
So tell us what, what's happening tomorrow, Stu, what time, the links above, by the way, if you want to take part in Stu's training, it only happens once a year. So I urge you to sign up. I'm going to be following along with it. I'm very excited. But can you just fill us in with what's yeah. happening? Well, definitely come and join us. The workshop is absolutely free. There are four sessions to it. So the first one starts tomorrow. And as Michelle said, the link is above. So click the link, come join. Um, but the first session, we're going to really focus on like helping you get go from like a fuzzy idea like, hey, I like the idea of a membership, but I have no idea what I would do for mine. Uh, we'll help you go from a fuzzy idea to a clear idea. We'll talk about like what markets make for a good market. We'll also talk about like how do you position yourself so that when people hear about your membership, they naturally want in. Like, you know, one of the things that I talk about a lot is in fact I talked about it this morning on uh, my Instagram stories you know I was sharing with uh, a woman in our community who was struggling with the tension of she said I I don't want to have to sell like I just want to be able to like love on my people and do my thing and I said well hold up a second like that you loving on your people is like the best thing that you can do for sales because you know people will feel it people will feel that and that creates this, you know, foundation of trust. And that trust is the thing that then opens their arms and their, or their opens their eyes and their hearts to like what they could do next to go from where they are to where they want to be. And you become the natural bridge to that. And, and we'll talk about this. And then the other thing that uh, we'll share throughout the workshop for sure is how do you actually launch this membership in the most simple, easy way. And I will tell everybody here right now that there's a process whereby you can 100% launch your membership site today. All you would need is an audience of 200 people or more. And most people watching have an audience of 200 people on Facebook, Instagram, maybe a podcast, YouTube, email list, clients, you know, customers, whatever it might be. But an audience of 200 people or more is all you would need to be able to initially launch your membership. And imagine that being able to launch your membership and generate recurring revenue. Like people will do it during this free workshop. My hope is it's you watching uh, right now. I hope that you will do it. And then I hope that like Michelle and I will be on there with you live and we'll be celebrating and we'll be talking about it. Michelle, by the way, you should probably have a, a hashtag for your community. Like, so we can give them a shout out like during the live broadcast and stuff. I love that idea. Absolutely. Um, I, and, you know, I just want to just say really quickly when you talked about clients there as well, because you can actually you can actually set up a subscription for your clients, too. Um, and this is something else I think people overlook. Like you can set something up where, you know, people pay a subscription to access discounts to what you have, to private viewings, to the inner parts of your world, to follow along with blogs that aren't featured publicly, you know, to give people like exclusive access to you, mm. you can create a subscription for that, you know? Yeah. So, and these are the things that you can test out too. So, And we're yeah. going to talk about this and a whole lot more uh, during mm. the free workshop. And the one thing that yeah. I will say is there's a huge advantage to showing up live because I know if you show up live, there's a much higher probability that you are actually going to implement the things that we're talking about. And so to incentivize you, we have these things called super secret segments. And it's a portion of the broadcast that are only available to everybody who shows up live. Again, it's all free. But if you wait around to watch the replay only, those super secret segments are edited out. And I'll just give you a teaser for tomorrow's super secret segment. One of, our, one of my clients um, hired me for a one-on-one -on -one VIP day. Now, she's had a membership site that has grown steadily over the years, but we got real clear on like, okay, if she were to do one thing this year that would have a, an, a, a ripple effect on all other areas of the business, what would it be? And what we identified was if she can grow her audience, like it would have a huge impact on all other areas. So we sat down and we went through this one exercise that I'm actually going to walk you through during the super secret segment. Now, here's the results of that one exercise. After that, she had a clear, cl uh, a clear cut plan for how to grow her audience. And less than 30 days ago, her Instagram audience 
had been stuck at around 5,000 followers. It'd been that way for years. In the last 30 days, Michelle, Lisa Kay has grown her audience to almost 20,000 on Instagram in 30 days. Oh my from gosh. From 5,000 to 20,000 in oh 30 days. Gosh. And I'm going to walk everybody through the process and exercise that I took her through during her our you know private VIP day. I'm going to do that during the super secret segment. So make sure you come and join us uh, live. That's absolutely incredible. Some of you will know Lisa Kay because she came in as a guest and we've got a podcast episode as well. So absolutely incredible. I'm so, so honored that you came to share this time with our audience. We know it's a really busy time for you and for you to take this time out means the world to us. And I've wanted to have Stu on this um, podcast for a long time, but I was too scared because I knew I'd cry. So I've finally finally featured you yes <laughs> well buddy i am so excited to be here i love you to bits i'm so stinking proud of you uh and to follow your journey and to be a part of it in some small way is just really really special and magical and i can see in the chat the incredible relationship uh that you have with your audience and the impact that you've had and i i hope you now i'm talking to you you know audience you, uh, you pause on, on, but I'm talking to you, Michelle, right now. Like, I hope you take a moment, you know, sometime later today or later this week and go through all those comments uh, oh, and really man. internalize the ripple effect that you've had on so many people. It's magical and it's special, Michelle. And I'm, I'm just really proud of you, buddy. Yeah. And thank you. Cause I know I was a pain in your butt for a long time. <laughs> no, no, you're figuring it out. Like that's part of the journey, you know? <laughs> so the link is above someone's asked how do i join links above you'll get sent all the details go and check your junk folder in case you haven't received the welcome email from Stu's team but as soon as you sign up Stu's team will take great care of you they are phenomenal you know i would not share links to anything unless you know i 100 percent um trust so and you know that i don't even have to say that <laughs> thank you so much well thanks michelle thanks everybody hope we'll see you at the workshop take care yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.